In the year 410, Alaric, king of the Visigoths, invaded Italy and laid siege to Rome. Why did he do this? After all, for the past few years, despite military flare-ups, it seemed like Alaric and the Visigoths wanted to work with the Roman Empire, to be a part of it to some degree. Two years earlier, in 408, the Roman general Stilicho, who held the title Magister Militum, head of the Western Roman military, was executed after seeking refuge in a church. His crime? Pulling troops from the Rhine border back to Italy to help defend it from barbarians, including the Visigoths. Stilicho was damned by the Roman politician Olympias for fostering a conspiracy to weaken the empire, and with the consent of the Emperor Honorius, he was killed. After his death, many federates, allied contingents of barbarian troops, and their families were massacred. Some estimates placed the deaths at something like 30,000, and many fled to Alaric for protection. The sources aren't entirely clear on this matter, but we have enough evidence to strongly suggest that Alaric was not completely secure in his status as king, and needed some sort of title or other form of Roman backing for legitimation. The death of Stilicho removed one of the key people who could have bestowed something like that on him, so he appears to have been left without a choice, and in 408 he led his troops into Italy once more. The Roman capital, Ravenna, was too well defended, so he went south and laid siege to Rome. His troops had taken the ports, so the city was effectively cut off, and eventually Rome was ransomed. The Goths made off with 5,000 pounds of gold, 30,000 pounds of silver, 4,000 silk tunics, 3,000 scarlet-colored hides, and 3,000 pounds of pepper. These were not huge amounts of booty, but the message had been sent. As this was going on, Didymus and Verinianus, two brothers of Honorius, led a rebellion in Spain against Constantine III. Constantine had originally come from Britain with an army to challenge Honorius and to fight the barbarians and restore order in Gaul, something which Honorius appeared unable to do. But the brothers were defeated in Spain and were executed. So now it looked like Constantine was gaining the upper hand. The Vandals, Alans, and Suebes invaded southern Gaul. Probably, anyway, the sources are not entirely clear if this happened now, or if it had already occurred but the invasion was apparently brutal. Constantine sent a message to Honorius attempting to make peace, and while Constantine appointed himself as consul of Rome for 409, meaning that he thought he had won Honorius over, Honorius considered maybe using Constantine and Alaric to deal with one another. Two birds, one stone, that whole thing. Alaric continued to issue demands to the Romans. This time, he stated that he wanted the territory of Venetia and Histria, essentially what is today northeastern Italy, as well as Noricum and Dalmatia, more or less the Balkan coast of the Adriatic Sea and modern-day Austria. If he got those territories, then what that meant was that the Visigoths would have control of the northeastern Alpine passes and could effectively invade Italy whenever they wanted. But there was another problem. Jovinus, a Roman aristocrat, led an attempted coup against Honorius, and Jovinus claimed, apparently untruthfully, that Alaric wanted to be named Magister Militum, essentially to become the new Stilicho. Alaric denied this, and then he dropped the demand for territory, only wanting regular payments of gold and grain for his people. In exchange, he would place the Visigoths at the disposal of the Romans. But he was denied, so seeing no other option, he invaded Italy again and once more laid siege to Rome, taking the port and cutting the city off from outside contact. The city surrendered, and Honorius sent an aristocrat, Priscus to negotiate terms with Alaric. But Alaric and the Senate of Rome felt that Honorius wasn't going to be able to deliver, so they raised Priscus Italis as a rival emperor. Priscus Italis granted Alaric the title of Magister Petitum master of the infantry, so one of the higher-ranking military titles, but not the supreme commander. He was not another Stilicho, but, very quickly, the ball was back in Honorius' court because one of his generals, Heraclianus, was still in control of Africa, and Africa was where the Romans grew most of the food for Italy, specifically for Rome, and Heraclianus kept the ships with the grain in Africa. Honorius was also backed up in Ravenna by about 4,000 troops who had just come in from the eastern provinces, and Constantine III had invaded Italy. 
We don't really know what this was about. It's possible that Constantine had invaded Italy to help Honorius, but in any case, he left just as soon as he came, probably due to being defeated by Alaric in battle. That doesn't appear to have been that big of a problem, though, and the attacks by Honorius' general Saurus also appears to have not been that big of a deal to Alaric, and Honorius was not moving from Ravenna. But the lack of grain from Africa was taking its toll. So Priscus Italus attempted to attack Africa, but he was defeated and he was deposed. Because of this, Alaric was probably forced to return to Rome, and he laid siege to it again on the 24th of August in the year 410. Three days later, on the 27th, the city, starving, opened its gates. The sack of Rome is infamous, and while the damage appears to have been somewhat restrained, or at least restrained for that time period, the mausoleum of Augustus was desecrated and people were tortured for the location of gold and other precious items but an effort appears to have been made to refrain from attacking churches and other Christian sites. St. Jerome famously wrote that the city of Rome, home of many nations, had now become their tomb. And Honorius, who was told of this by one of his servants, cried out in disbelief, supposedly, that it was impossible for Rome to have perished because Rome had just eaten from his hand. He was referring, of course, to his pet rooster of the same name. Alaric's problem, though, was that this had less severe political effects than he had maybe anticipated. His troops still did not have enough food, and he could really only affect any sort of change. He could really only bring about any sort of weight to bear on Honorius if he controlled Africa and thus the grain supply. The sack of Rome had made him realize this. So he tried to force his way to Africa through Sicily, but on the way, in Brutium, he fell ill with a severe fever and he died. Things did not improve after his death, however. Alaric was succeeded by his brother-in-law, Atalf, but he didn't have any sort of permanent title. While Priscus Italis had been propped up as a puppet emperor, Atalf had been the master of the cavalry. But, despite being in possession of Honorius' sister, Gala Placidia, which is a whole story of its own which we'll be doing a video on, after Atalus was deposed, Atalf had tried to negotiate with Honorius, but because he had no legitimate title, he declared himself king of the Goths and he attempted to campaign in Italy for greater leverage. But after two years of little success, the tax assessment for Campania was reduced by about 90% due to the Gothic incursion, but that looks like it was about the extent of the damage. He took what remained of his Visigothic forces to southern Gaul. And once he did that, the Visigoths were swept up into the whirlwind of late Roman politics, where they became both allies and pawns of various Roman emperors and imperial pretenders. It is in the aftermath of Alaric's sack of Rome that the Western Roman Empire would begin to fray, and the Empire would enter the age of the warlords.